Hello and welcome to Nullitaire Gaming, where we play games with zero players. In other words, we play bots against one another. And in this series, we're going to play People Power. Insurgency in the Philippines, 1981 to 1986. This is from the Coin series by GMT Games. This is volume 11. It's the most recent one, just came out. Um, I just got this game about a month ago or so. It was designed by Kenneth T. And um, we're taking a break uh, from <laughs> the Imperium tournament that I have going on right now, just because, well, that tournament's going to take a long time, uh, and I kind of want—I I, kind of want to take a break from it. And also, this game just came out, and I kind of want to get it to the table and, and uh, do a Nolitaire uh, playthrough of it. So that's what we're going to do in this series. And here we go. Because this is a relatively new game, I imagine that. Some of you will be interested in uh, hearing about how the game plays, but I don't want to do a full like tutorial video or anything like that. So uh, I think what I'll do is, but I do want to sort of give some information about how this game plays, again, because it is relatively new. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll more or less assume that anyone watching this video is familiar with COIN, so I won't talk about the, the rules of COIN, but... Um, uh, I will talk about the, the unique features of this game. And this is on the back of the rule book, or sorry, the playbook, not the rule book. Uh, a quick start guide for returning coin players. Well, they just detail uh, some differences between this game and previous uh, coin games, previous games in the series. Um, so if you want to look at this, that would, you know, you could pause the video and look at it if you like. But I'll try to hit on these points when I'm setting up the game and playing through it uh, to sort of reinforce these differences in, in the way that uh, people power plays. I will definitely also talk in some detail about the Bonifacio system, which is, uh, which is the solitaire uh, system, the bots, uh, for this game. Obviously we're going to use <laughs> the bots quite extensively, so uh, you know, this is the, the, the fold-out for that, and there's a whole rule book dedicated to it. Uh, so I'll spend some time talking about how this works as well. So before we get too deep into talking about the setup and, and the bots and how they play, first a, a shout-out to uh, Joe Dewhurst, who designed the Bonifacio system, uh, the bots for this game. So this is the back page of the Bonifacio rule book. Uh, which just gives important uh, golden rules in important terms. And I want to talk about this um, a little bit before we get into the specific details of setup. Uh, but first, I want to refer to um, this is part of the rule book from uh, Liberty or Death, which I did a series of before. It's the only other coin game I've done a series for on this channel. And I want to point out something about the non-player uh, factions in that game, the bots from that game. And a particular problem that I had with them. And it's a problem that I have in general with pretty much all the bots that I've seen from Coin. And that is that they're cheater bots. <laughs> they don't play by the rules. Um, and I, I really don't like that. I don't like cheater bots. And I said this also in my uh, playthrough of Liberty or Death. But here's the big important cheater rule from Liberty or Death and in lots of other coin games. The commands not limited rule. Whenever a non-player faction by the sequence of plays to execute a limited command, it instead executes a full command in special activity. So that's a, that's a cheater rule, right? The human players don't play by that rule. Only the bots get to play by that rule. So that's what I call a cheater rule. And I don't like it. Um, and so when I played Liberty or Death, I ignored this rule. I said, no, when a bot is presented with only a, a limited command, that's all it gets. It doesn't get to just suddenly say, oh, I only have a limited command available. Well, I play by a special rule where I just get to <laughs> do a full command special activity. Um, so in that playthrough, and in all my Nolitaire playthroughs of any coin games, I always just ignore this rule. Uh, and, I, you know, the, the point of the rule is clear. It's to make the game harder for a human player. 
right? Because these bots are designed for solitaire plays. It, it makes good sense, you know. I, I get why the rule is there. Um, but for solitaire play, I don't like it. I don't, you know, there's, there's no reason to have the bots play in a different way than the humans do because we're not trying to balance the game for a human player. We're just putting the bots up against each other. So it seems to me perfectly fine to just ignore that rule when playing Nolitaire, at least. Uh, so that's so that's what I've done. Okay. Now, uh, People Power does not have this cheater rule, which I'm pleasantly surprised <laughs> to see that. This cheater rule is just missing from the Bonifacio system uh, in People Power. So that's great. So I don't have to ignore that rule because <laughs> it's just not there. However, there are some cheater rules in People Power that I want to talk about because, again, I don't like them. I don't like cheater rules. Okay, so let's go over to the golden rules here. Uh, and we see right at the beginning, when I read this, I was, I was pretty happy. NP factions follow the rules. That is, non-player factions follow the rules. Hooray! <laughs> You're telling me these bots don't cheat? Well... Then that parenthetical there, <laughs> my heart sinks. Almost, oh no. <laughs> all right, so let's see. MP factions abide by all applicable power, uh, people power rules with these exceptions. Okay, so here are the cheater rules. MP factions never remove pieces from the map to available when lacking pieces for an operation, special activity, or event. If this means that an operation would have no effect, draw a new Bonifacio card to select a different operation. Well, okay, that's fine, you know, because that's not really a cheater rule. Basically, what's being said here is, here's an option that's available to human players that these bots will just never exercise. And I'm fine with that. Okay, that's not cheating. That's just saying, you know, this is normally, this is permitted by the rules, but the bots are never going to do it. That's fine. No problem there. Okay, so I'm perfectly happy with that. Next, MP factions do not track or spend resources. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a cheater rule, for sure. Uh, they don't track or spend resources. Okay, because, you know, obviously tracking and spending resources is a, a big part of the game, normally. Um, you know, the economic sort of side of the game. So I, I was, I'm really unhapy to see that here. Because uh, that's definitely a cheater rule. And so, of course, I'm going to try to find a way to ignore that. And I'll, I'll talk about um, how I'm going to make the bots uh, track and spend resources uh, when, we, when we set this up. Okay, and also NP factions roll against an activation number to limit total spaces uh, selected for operations. Again, I'm okay with that. I mean, that's not a cheater rule. It's just saying we have this special way of determining when a bot will stop choosing spaces for operations. Okay, and, and normally, you know, the number of normally the number of resources would really limit <laughs> choices, uh, but because they don't spend or, or track any resources, they need some other way of showing when they're going to limit, uh, uh, of determining when they're going to limit their operations. Okay, so I'm totally fine with that rule too. Okay, because that that kind of simulates uh, a human player saying, "I'm not going to spend any more resources on this operation. I want to spend spend uh, save my resources for later." Okay. So really the only cheater rule here is this second bullet point. They do not track or spend resources. And uh, just like with the other coin games, I do not like cheater rules, so I'm going to find a way to ignore that in our Nolitaire play. I'm, I'm going to find a way to make them track and spend resources. Okay, and I'll talk about that uh, in, during setup. Okay, so I've set up the game according to the extended scenario. So we're going to play the long... Uh, version of the game. Um, so here's what the board looks like for that. This game always has an election card here um, in play and it gives a particular, it makes a particular change to the gameplay, okay, just like momentum cards in other coin games. So this is going to be in play for this entire campaign until another election card comes up and takes its place. So for, for the first campaign, the 1981 uh, campaign, uh, Enrich only adds patronage equal to the population of the selected space. So this makes the government use of Enrich, which is one of their special abilities, uh, a little less powerful than it would normally be. Okay, 
Um, and as I said, I am going to track resources over here for all of the, the bots, even though according to the Bonifacio rules, they don't track resources. I'm going to explain how that's going to work as we, as we go through it. Um, okay. Um, I guess we're ready to go. Oh, one more thing I want to mention is um, I brought in a couple of extra pawns from a different coin game. So, you know, there's only six white pawns with this game, but I brought in four more just because the way I do uh, space selection, I like to have uh, enough pawns to cover every space. So there's 10 spaces on the board, so I want 10 pawns. So I just, I borrowed four more pawns. Um, another thing about uh, people power that's different from other coin games is these cards, personality cards and acts of desperation. Uh, at the beginning of the extended scenario, these are not in play, but uh, when the first election card comes up, these personality cards will come into play, and the acts of, de uh, excuse me, acts of desperation cards come into play during the final campaign. So we'll eventually see those, but right now, none of those are in play. Okay, looks like we're ready to go. Okay, so the first card for this game is General Vera Quitted. Uh, one thing about uh, this game, different from other coin games, is that we don't reveal the top card of the deck. So players can't see the next card, they only can see the one that's in play. Obviously with bots it doesn't matter, we can have the bots look at all the cards. <laughs> they can't see them, so to speak. So anyway, uh, but that is, that is different in this game. Alright, so our uh, first eligible faction here is the government. Now none of these factions have the, the shaded icon behind them to tell us that that's a critical event. And let me show you what that looks like since this is our very first card. These are some, these are some cards that are not in play in this game, but you see the, the shaded icons in the back. Okay, this kind of starburst behind the government icon. The little uh, L symbol with the, with the hand behind the L symbol with the hand. <laughs> okay, and the assault rifle uh, for the MPA. Okay, so those show that those are critical events for them. Okay, but we don't see that, any of those on this card. Okay, so this is not a critical event. Uh, for any of these factions, so none of them are going to be interested in, in taking this event. That's gen generally the way this works. Okay, so if you just don't see that icon there, you know the faction's not interested in it. All right, <clears throat> but to be clear, here's the uh, eligibility table. So the way it works is a faction that's first eligible just goes down the list and takes the first, uh, the first uh, thing that's relevant. So the very first thing, current event is critical and effective. No, it isn't, because it's just not. It's not critical, so we don't care if it's effective. So it just says otherwise. What do they do? They just take an op and special activity. All right, well, that's pretty easy. Either the event's critical or it isn't. If it's, if it's not critical, they just go with an op and special activity. That's it. Okay, so the government is going to go for an op and special activity. So to choose an op and special activity, we're going to use the Bonifacio deck, which is this uh, deck of cards here. Basically what you do is you just take um, the cards for each faction that's a non-player, whatever bots you're using. In this case, we're playing all bots, so I just shuffled them all together. And, um, and these are double-sided, so there's a darker side on the other side, and it has uh, the, the lettering here is doubled, okay, so this is... LL on this side and only L on that side. Okay, so you put them on the um, single letter sort of lighter side up Okay, and then what you do is now is, it's the government's turn So we'll just go through here until we find a government card There's one the rest of these just go down to the bottom and now we'll just go through uh, This flow chart and figure out what the government's going to do. Okay, so starting at the top any spaces without government control? Yes, there are definitely spaces on the map without government control right now. So we follow the green arrow. If that were a no, we would follow the red uh, block there. And this would tell us to draw a new card. That's what that icon means. Okay, so we follow the green arrow. Any two plus population space with control troops, police, and no support protesters strike. Okay, let's see. Two population spaces with control, troops, police, and no support protesters strike. Okay. 
Well, we have a two population space there, but it has support. This is more than two, but it has support. This one's two, but it has support. These two, Zamboanga and Davao, are two plus population spaces. They do not have support. Okay, this one does not have any troops though, so Davao might be the only one possible. A two population space with control, yes. Troops, yes, the dark blue ones are troops. Police, that's the light blue one, yes. There's no support, and there's no protest or strike. Okay, so Davao is it. Um, it definitely qualifies. Okay, I should also mention the way where I have the bases placed might look strange, like this base is almost out of the spot. And that's because I like to put the bases right above these two spots to remind me of the stacking rules. There's only two bases total are allowed. So I, I try to put them above these, but I don't want to cover up the name <laughs> because I'm not that good at these names. <laughs> I want to be able to read it. Um, okay, so that's why you might see a base kind of looking like it's in a weird spot. Um, that's just so that I can see the stacking easily. Okay, so like here, I put the base right above the neutral spot there. Because here it's not covering up any name, so that's <laughs> easy. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay, so Deval satisfies this question. Yes, there are some two plus population spaces with control, troops, please, and no support, protest, or strike. Okay, so they're going to train. And this tells us how they're going to train. Just going to select spaces using place cubes. Okay, so we have to look at some charts. So I do this in a particular way to make sure that I don't miss anything. And I'm going to show you how I do that. But first of all, you might notice a little bit of a post-it note here. Uh, I do that to remind me that there's something unique about this special ability right now. And that's because of the, the election card. So if you see, you see these little post-it things here and there on my charts, that's, that's what that's for. Just to remind me that there's something, there's something unusual about that, uh, given the state of the game right now. Okay, but the government is going to train here. So the first thing I do is I go to location, and I'll just mark any possible location with a white pawn. This is why I want 10 white pawns. So <laughs> I have one for every possible space. So it says location, any cities. So I would mark all the cities with white pawns. And countryside spaces with government control or government base. So then I'd mark all the countryside spaces that either have a government control or a government base also. So I'll do that now. Okay, so I've marked every space that qualifies for train. Every city is marked, and the only countryside space with either control or a base, in fact it has both, is northern Luzon. So that's also a spot where the government can train. Okay, now that we've selected everywhere the government can train, we have to figure out where they will train. Okay, and remember on the Bonifacio card it said we were going to use place cubes. What that means is you use this chart. This is the space selection priorities chart. Each faction has their own. And it says place cubes up here at the top. Right there. <laughs> place cubes. Okay, so we're using that column to select our priorities. So we just go down the column and we sort of limit our priorities, you know, until we finally get down to exactly one. When we get down to exactly one, that's the space that'll be selected. Okay, so first of all, no government control. Okay, that's the first priority. So I check all these pawns that I have placed out and see if any of them are in a space with no government control. None of them are. Okay, so that didn't do anything. Okay, so returning to our chart, the next one is vulnerable base of any faction. Okay, so we need to know the special terminology of vulnerable base. A vulnerable base uh, depends on the faction. So for the NPA, this base would be vulnerable if there were no underground guerrillas here. Okay, so if this one was active, for example, then this would be a vulnerable base. It's not protected by an underground guerrilla. Okay, so right now this, this base is not vulnerable. Okay, there are no activist bases on the map, but if there were, then again, same kind of thing. A, a Base is not vulnerable so long as there's an unactive activist in the space with it. But if all of the activists in the space are active, then that's a vulnerable base. Okay. So the way the, the reformers and the MPA work with vulnerable bases, vulnerable, vulnerable bases, 
is the same. The government's a little bit different. A government base is vulnerable if there are fewer than two cubes in the space with it. Okay, so this base is not vulnerable. This base is not vulnerable. Uh, but this one is. There are fewer than two cubes here. So this base in Cebu is vulnerable. Okay, this one is not, and that one is not. Okay, so that means we have narrowed it down to exactly one space. Cebu. So that's where they're going to train. Okay, returning to the train operation here. So now we've figured out the location for training. We must pay for it, cost two resources. And so, again, we're making the bots uh, track resources, so they'll pay two resources for it. And now let's look at the procedure. At each selected city or government base, okay, this is a city, so they can do this, place up to four cubes. Okay, so they're going to put four cubes in there. And uh, bots always do these things to the maximum extent. So, I need this chart. Hold on. So they're going to place uh, the maximum number possible. They have more than four cubes, so they're going to place four. Okay, but how do they place these cubes? Well, cubes are placed um, alternating police than troops. Okay, so when we're placing um, Yeah, okay, this is a little bit confusing, but when <laughs> you read top down and left to right to remove, replace, or activate enemy pieces and place or move friendly pieces. So if we're placing friendly pieces, this is the government placing their own pieces, so they're placing friendly pieces, they will do it in order from left to right, alternate police, then troops. Okay, so that's how they're going to do it. They're going to alternate police, then troops. So they'll put one police, then they'll put a troop, then they'll put a police, then they'll put a troop. Okay. So these are all going to go in Cebu. Okay, so continuing on with the train operation. It says, then in one selected space with government control, replace three cubes with a base, or if troops police, no protest or strike, and government control by civic action. All right, well, that doesn't come into effect until after the government has finished selecting all of their spaces uh, to do train. Then they can select one to do to do that special bit. Okay, so we have to go back here as we're still under the first uh, part of train here where we're selecting spaces using place cubes. Okay, so we don't quite get to civic action yet. Okay, so we have to find out whether or not the government wants to select another space to place some cubes. And we do that by using this activation number. Okay, two in this case. So we roll a die and if the government roll higher than that activation number, then they will select more space. They'll, they'll select another space, okay, if possible. Remember, I'm forcing the bots to track resources here, so they could also run out of money. That's another way that they could uh, be limited in doing this action. But right now, the government has, has 10 resources, so they can still afford uh, to do more. All right, so we're going to roll a die and see if they roll higher than a 2. They rolled a two, so that's not greater than their activation number, so that means they will stop. They won't continue selecting spaces for this first priority. Okay, and then what that means is they'll move on to the next instruction, but before they do that, they implement any instructions that have a star next to them. Okay, so they're going to do this. They're going to do civic action using shifts towards support, 4 max 1d3 steps, and terror removed. And when you see the arrow here, that's some special instructions. So unless operation is limited, civic action may target an additional space not yet selected for train. Okay, well, if we look at the only space selected for train so far was Cebu, well, it's already at support. So they're not interested in buying civic action here. That won't do anything. But because of this special instruction, they can select another space and, uh, and do civic action there. So here's how I, I do that. Well, let me do it and then I'll talk about it. Hold on. 
So I use the black pawns now to mark any, uh, any space that's already been selected. So Cebu's already been selected. And I put the white pawns back in all the places where train is possible, except that space, since it's already been selected. And so now the government is able to potentially select between these uh, other options for, for train. But now they're using a different uh, a different priority. They're using shift towards support rather than place cubes. So we'll have to look at their chart and find out if they want to select any of these spaces for train. Okay, so now we're using shift towards support, which is this column. So we go down the column. We see this one says, Reformers is a player. Well, I treat all bots as players. So the reformers, yes, they're a player. Space at opposition, no, none of these spaces are at opposition. There's no opposition on the board. NPA is a player, yes, again, treating all bots as players. Spaces at resistance, no, none of those spaces are at resistance. Spaces at neutral, yeah, some of them are. Down here, Samboanga and Davao are both at neutral. So that means Manila and Northern Luzon are no longer options. So we remove those pawns. So now we're just choosing between these two. Since we haven't narrowed it down to a single space yet, we carry on. Okay, so that's this one, space at neutral. Next is most population. Well, both spaces are at two population. Fewest enemy pieces. Well, they're tied with that in that respect. Okay, and then finally select at random for remaining spaces. So we'd want to select randomly from these two remaining spaces. Oh, I actually just realized <clears throat> the government actually can't do civic action here because there are no troops. So that shouldn't have been an option to begin with. Okay, so Davao is going to be the space. They're going to select it for train. That means they have to pay two resources to select it. But they're not going to place any cubes. Instead, they're just going to do civic action, which means because they have control, troops, and police, there's no terror or, um, sorry, no protest or strike in the space, they can do civic action. They just pay two more resources to set it to support. Okay. So now we move down, follow the arrow to find a special activity. Well, first it says 1983 campaign or later. Well, we're not to the 83 campaign yet. This is the, this is the 81 campaign. We know that because of the election, 1981 election. The next campaign is the 1983 campaign. Okay, so we are not in that campaign. So next is charm in one space without support using shift towards support. So let's see if they can do that. Okay, so looking at charm, it says location, any space with government control. So again, I've marked every space that's under government control. So now the black pawns are telling us where an operation was performed this turn, and the white pawns are telling us where special, this special activity is possible. So now we have to look at their uh, priority chart to figure out if they will select any of these spaces. Okay, so once again, we're using shift towards support for our priorities here. So first, if uh, reformers are a player, space at opposition, none of those spaces are at opposition, none of them are at resistance. So space at neutral, yeah. So this space is not at neutral, it's out. This is not at neutral, it's out. This one's not at neutral, it's out. And this one's not at neutral, it's out. So, Zambuanga, it's the only one left. That's at neutral, they will do charm here. So how do they do charm? Well, they have to spend one patronage. They have one patronage, they can do that. Then shift the space one level towards support, and then aid goes up by three. Okay, they spent their one patronage, it's down to zero. They shifted the city towards support, and now aid will be increased by three, up to 13. And because patronage went down, then the, that means control plus patronage, which is the uh, government's uh, victory uh, condition, goes down by one. Okay, charm is max one space, so they can't select any more spaces for charm. That is the end of the government turn, and so they ended up doing an op and a special activity, so their piece will go there. The next eligible faction is the reformers. 
So here's an issue that's not quite so clear uh, with using the Bonifacio uh, bot. Um, right now the reformers are considered second eligible. But that's not because they're the second to act. It's because there's already a piece here. If the government had taken either a limited operation or passed, then the reformers at this point would be considered first eligible because there's no, uh, there's no, um, <laughs> there's no first faction piece placed over here. Okay, so they're second eligible simply because there's already a piece in the first faction. So that means if the reformers were to do a limited operation or pass, then the NPA would now be second eligible. Okay, it seems like they're third eligible because they're acting third, but no, that's not the way this game thinks about it. <laughs> not the way the Bonifacio system thinks about it. They'd be second eligible because this space is open right now. That would make them second eligible. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at this chart. Okay, so third, you know, third eligible here doesn't, or sorry, second eligible here doesn't necessarily mean the second uh, faction to act. It just means if if the if the first faction <laughs> has taken up a space over here, then the next faction to act is going to be second eligible. Okay, if the first if this whatever act, faction acted first did something else, well then the next faction would still be first eligible. Okay, so that's the way to understand this. It's a little confusing, but that's the way it works. So the reformers are second eligible right now. First eligible, first eligible chose op and special activity. Uh, they did, and current event is critical and effective. No, it's not critical for the reformers. Uh, so we move on to the second priority. First eligible chose op only or event. No, it did. So otherwise, limited operation. Okay. So the reformers are going to go for a limited operation. The beauty of that in People Power, as opposed to other coin games, is that if you take a limited operation, meaning you just perform an operation in one space only, then you actually get to stay eligible for the next turn. You don't have to go ineligible. So that's, that's a new wrinkle in this uh, game over other coin games. And the way the Bonifacio system works is basically no faction is interested in doing op only because of that unique thing. Okay, so no faction will ever take op only. All right, so if they're not interested in the event and they don't want to do op only, well then, they should take a limited operation so they can stay eligible. Or passing, but the way the Bonifacio system is written, the bots don't track resources, so they're never really interested in passing because all it does is give them resources. Because I'm forcing the bots to track resources, this actually will be an option sometimes, and I'll. I'll show you when that may may happen. Okay, so all that being said, <laughs> what the reformers want to do is take a limited operation. Okay, so back to the Bonifacio deck. We go through until we find a reformer card. There we go. And we just start at the top, work our way down. Okay, 3d6 is greater than opposition and reformer bases on map. Well, there's no opposition plus reformer bases on the map. <laughs> There's, there are no, not even any reformer pieces on the map or any opposition on the map. So that's zero. No matter what we roll, that's going to be greater. Okay. So the answer is yes. Uh, two or more activists in any space with room for an available base and not at support. Well, there aren't any activists on the board. So the answer to that is no. Okay. So this icon tells us to flip this card over. So that's what we're going to do. Flip the card over. And then we, again, just start at the top. Activists in any space with no terror or strike and not at opposition. Again, there are no activists on the board. So the answer to that is no. We follow that red arrow. And we get to, oh, select a special activity. Well, they can't select a special activity because they're trying to do a limited operation. So they're just going to skip that and move on to assemble. Symbol using the move priorities. So if we look at the assemble operation, it says purpose, move activists, remove terror, and protest. Well, uh, there aren't any activists on the board to move, <laughs> and there's no terror and no protest going on. So actually, assemble here won't do anything. Uh, so we ended up choosing an activity that doesn't do anything. And when that happens, basically, you just find a new card. So we'll just go to the next card. 
and we'll carry on like that until we find something that actually does that does work. Okay, so we're basically starting over now. Okay, <laughs> government base with no cubes and any activists. Well, no, no such thing, right? Uh, there are no activists on the board. So it tells us, draw another card. Okay, so we're just going to keep on going through here. We'll eventually find something they want to do. Okay, 3d6 greater than op uh, uh, oppose plus reformer bases on map. Yes, definitely, because that's zero. So 3d6 will always be greater than zero. Activists in any space with no terror or strike and not at opposition. No, so we flip this card over. 2d6 is less than the available activists. Yes, definitely, because there are 16 available activists, so no matter what the role, it will be less than that. So they'd like to recruit. Okay. And we're told only make an activation number roll after placing activists. So activation number roll means rolling against this number here. And by the way, during the last campaign of the game, the reformers, uh, these numbers change. But we're not in that position yet. Okay, so they only make an activation number after placing activists. That means only after number three here. They'll do the first two and then get to three, and they'll only make an activation number roll after that. Okay, so number one, place bases where three or more activists. There aren't any activists on the board, so that doesn't do anything. Place bases where two or more activists and no police. Again, no activists on the board. So finally, select spaces using place activists. Okay, so looking at the recruit operation, we're told the location is any space without support. So once again, I've marked every space without support with white pawns. So those are all the places where assembly is, uh, where assemble, or sorry, where recruit <laughs> is possible. All right, so now we have to see if they're going to select one of these spaces. Okay, so we're told to use place activists for the priorities here, so we'll just go down the line. Government control. None of those bases are at government control, so that doesn't narrow it down. Vulnerable reformer bases. There are no reformer bases on the map. Space not at opposition. Okay, all the spaces selected with white pawns right now are, are not at opposition, so that doesn't narrow it down. Most population. Yes, that does narrow things down because these spaces are all one population and this one's two. So that narrows it down to exactly one space. Our selection for the reformers will be Eastern Mindanao. So back to the operation. It costs one resource. So the reformers will have to pay one resource for it. Ten five. Okay. Then, in each space, place one activist or replace two of the base. Well, can't do that. Or, if reformer base, place activists up to population plus bases. Well, the only thing I can do is place one activist. So that's it. That's all they're going to do is place one activist in eastern Mindanao. That's it. Uh, and by the way, while we're talking about it, the activists do not count toward control unless they're active. If they're active, then they um, interrupt control. The reformers can never actually control a space, but they count toward control when they're uh, for either the government or the MPA when they're active. They don't count at all when they're inactive. Okay, that's it. Since we're doing a limited operation here for the reformers, they only get to select one space, and that's the end of their turn. So now it's the MPA turn, and again, even though they're third to act, they're really considered second eligible because this space is open over here. Okay. So we'll look at the chart for the second eligible to figure out what they're going to do. Okay. The first eligible chose op and special activity, yes. And current event is critical and effective, no. This is not a critical event for the MPA, so they're not interested. First eligible chose op only or event, no. So, otherwise, lim op. So essentially, the MPA is also going to choose a limited operation. Um, again, all the charts aside, basically the idea is if a faction is presented with just op only or event and they're not interested in the event, then they'll go for a limited operation. Okay, so that's what the NPA is going to do here too, limited operation. So here's the next NPA card. Starting at the top, government control in any two, two population spaces. Yes, definitely. Underground guerrilla in any space with a vulnerable government base or government control 
and may perform a special activity. Well, the MPA can't perform a special activity here because they can only do a limited operation, so we don't need to check anything else. Okay, so we're going to flip the card over. Uh, 1d6 less than available gurias. Yes, uh, they definitely have more than six. So no matter what the roll is, the answer will be yes. Okay, they're going to rally. And just like with uh, Recruit for the Reformers, they only make an activation number roll after placing Gorillas. So these first two place bases, and then they get to placing Gorillas. Okay, so place a base where there are three or more Gorillas. No, there's no such place. Place bases where two or more Gorillas and no cubes. No, there's no such space. So select spaces using place Gorillas. All right, so let's see... Uh, what they choose. So the rally operation, location, any space not at support. So once again I've marked all of the possible spaces with white pawns and we'll see uh, what they select. So looking at their chart we're looking under uh, place gurias. Okay. Vulnerable NPA base? No, they do have a base on the map but it's not vulnerable. There's an underground guria there. Vulnerable government base? No, none of those spaces have government bases. Government control? No, none of those spaces are at government control. Space not at resistance? Well, they're all not at resistance. <laughs> so that doesn't narrow it down either. Okay, most population? Okay, well, once again, we know what that's going to do. That's going to select Eastern Mindanao because these are all, all the others are one population. Okay. So basically, the MPA is going to do exactly the same thing as the reformers. Okay, so back to the rally operation here. It costs one resource, so we'll have to make them pay a resource for that. Oops. I can mess with it. Okay. And now, place one Gurria or replace two of the base. Or if MPA base, either place Gurias up to population plus bases or flip all Gurias there underground. All right, so what that means is they just place a Gurria there. That's it. Oh, there's to it. So control here um, goes to the NPA now because activists don't count unless they're, af unless they're active. This is not active, so it doesn't count. And the NPA has more pieces than all the other factions combined. So that means this is now under NPA control. Okay. Hey, we made it through the first card. <laughs> All right, and now since the government um, took one of these spaces, they go ineligible, and these two stay eligible for the next card. So the next card is Pope JP2 visit, and uh, the reformers are up uh, first. Notice we don't have any of the critical markings there, so this event is not critical for any of these factions. I should have mentioned, although it's probably pretty obvious now, that uh, another difference between this game and previous coin games is that all eligible factions act on every card. So it's never limited. You know, before it might have happened that the reformers sort of took this space, and you might think, you know, in other coin games, this faction would then just be out of luck and can't do anything because there are no spaces available. Not true in this game. Uh, this faction could still take a limited operation or pass. Okay. So every eligible faction acts on every card in this version of coin. Okay, because the reformers are not interested in the event, they're going to look for an operation and special activity. So this is the next card for them. Government control in any two plus population spaces. Yes, definitely true. One or more protest available. Yes. There are four uh, markers that are protest slash um, strike. Protest on one side, strike on the other. And so the, so those markers are limited to only four total. Okay, so, but there is one available because none of them have been used yet. And inactive activists in any space with government control and no terror or strike. Well, the only activist on the board is here in eastern Mindanao, and that's not at government control. So the answer to that is no. Okay, so we're going to flip this card. And now uh, 2d6 less than the available, less than or equal to the available activists. Yes, there are 15 available activists, so 
the role is irrelevant, it will definitely be less than or equal to that. Okay, so recruit. Only make an activation number roll after placing an activist. So we'll look for places to place bases. There's no spaces with three or even two activists, so those are irrelevant. So they're going to select spaces using place activists. So once again, they can only select spaces that are not at support. So I've marked all those with pawns. And now they will look for one of those spaces using place activists. Okay, so these are our priorities. Government control. No, none of those spaces are under government control. Vulnerable reformer bases. No, there are none on the map. Space not at opposition. All of them are not at opposition, so that doesn't help. Uh, most population. Okay, so once again, that's going to narrow it down to Eastern Mindanao, which is becoming quite a contested <laughs> area. Okay, so they're going to recruit here first. So they've paid a resource for the space, and now they're going to place another activist there. So since they're looking, since this is not a limited operation now, they will see if they want to place more activists by rolling against the activation number. So they'll roll a die. If it's greater than two, then they'll look to place some more activists. They roll a five. So they will attempt to place more activists. So I'll mark all the spaces where they can do that, and we'll see if they select one. So again, I've placed a black pawn where they've already selected the space, and I've marked with white pawns the available possible spaces they can select. And we'll go back to their chart, place activists. Okay, no government control, no vulnerable base, uh, none are at opposition. Most population now, all of the spaces are one population, so that doesn't help. Most reformer bases, there are none. Space at support, no, none of those spaces are at support. If NPA is a player, a space at resistance, well, none of those spaces are at resistance either. Space at neutral, they're all at neutral. Fewest government pieces. Okay, well, they all have zero government pieces. So we finally get down to the last line, which just says, choose randomly. So there are four possible spaces. Unfortunately, this game doesn't come with a four-sided or 12-sided die, so there's no kind of straightforward way to do this. But the way I do it is just, you know, just one, two, three, four. And if I roll a five or a six, I'll just re-roll it. Okay, the roll was a one. So that will be Southern Luzon. Okay, so that would be the selected space. I have to pay one resource for it, and they will simply place an activist there. And so now will they carry on? Well, they have more resources, so they can afford to carry on. So they're going to roll against the activation number again. If they roll higher than two, then they'll look to place more activists. They roll a four, so they will try to place some more activists. Okay, so now the spaces already selected are marked with black pawns, and the three available spaces uh, where recruiting can happen are marked with white pawns. And we've already gone through the chart, so we know exactly what's going to happen. It's just going to be a random roll. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. The roll is a five, so that means central Mindanao. Okay, they'll pay a resource and place an activist there. So now will they keep doing this? Well, they still have two resources, so they can still afford to keep going. So they'll roll against the activation number. They roll a one, so they will stop. So now moving on from recruit, they're gonna to try to find a special activity to do. So they'd like to convert first in up to two spaces with protest. Well, there aren't any protests on the map right now, so they can't do convert. And so the next thing says 1983 campaign or later. Well, it's not the 1983 campaign or later. So they don't want to appeal either. So they're just not going to choose a special activity. So here a special rule comes into play. Even though they were trying to do an operation and special activity, they ended up just doing an operation with no special activity. So uh, here, this rule, if an MP faction ever performs an operation in only a single space with no special activity, place their cylinder in the limited operation box. If a first eligible MP faction ever performs multiple operations without a special activity, 
place their cylinder in the op only or event box. Okay, so that second part comes into play here. Since they didn't choose an op and special activity, they only did the operation, they'll actually go down here. So it's the MPA turn now. Uh, they're not interested in the event, but op plus special activity is available to them, so they're going to take that. Just to be clear about that, they're second eligible. Uh, first eligible did not choose op and special activity. They chose op only. Therefore, this faction takes the op and special activity. Okay, here's the next MPA card. Government control in any two population spaces. Yes, definitely. Four more guerrillas in any space with a vulnerable government base or government control. Now, there are no spaces with that many guerrillas, so we'll flip this card over. 1d6 less than available guerrillas. Yes, definitely. There's plenty more than six available. So they're going to rally. And again, they only make an activation number after placing bases. So they'll look to place a base where there's three or more guerrillas. No such place. Uh, place a base where two or more and no cubes. The only place where two or more guerrillas does have a cube, so that doesn't work either. So they're going to select spaces using place guerrillas. Okay, I've moved some things around here to make it a little more user-friendly for me. I'm going to put the reformers over here and the deck here. Um, I want to have both of these charts available at the same time. It's getting a little tedious to <laughs> move back and forth between them. So I th hopefully this will make it a little more easy for me. Okay, so uh, the MPA would like to rally. So we need to select all the spaces not at support. So I'll put a pawn in all those spaces. Okay, well we're getting pretty used to these five spaces. <laughs> the ones not at support. Okay, so they're going to use their place Korea uh, priorities here. So vulnerable NPA base, no. The only base they have is fine. Vulnerable government base, no. Government control, none of those spaces are at government control. Space at resistance, none of them are at resistance. Most population, eh, well we know what that means. That's Eastern Mindanao. Okay, so that's the space they're going to select. They have to pay one resource and they put another guerrilla in there. They will roll against the activation number to see if they'll place any more. They roll a three, so they'll be looking to place more. All right, so I've marked the space they already selected with a black pawn, the other four are marked with white pawns, and we'll go down the list once again. Okay, so we know that these don't do anything Okay, so we got to most population. They're all tied with one. Most MPA bases. Well, actually, they do have a space with an MPA base. It's central Mindanao. So they will select that space. They'll pay one resource for the space. And because there's a base there, they get to play pace even more. Now, place career is up to population plus bases. So they actually get to put two here. Okay. Two. Rolling against their activation number, now they roll a four, so that's greater than two. They're going to try to <coughs> place more guerrillas. Okay, so three spaces now are possible. Uh, it's probably going to be random, I think, between these. Okay, so none of this is possible. Okay, most MPA bases, none of them have any bases. None of them are at support, none of them are at opposition. They're all at neutral. Um, there are no government pieces in any of those spaces, so yeah, they're going to select randomly. So we'll make it one, two, three, four, five, six. They roll the four, so that'll be uh, Visayas. I have to pay a resource for that, and they will place a single Korea. That actually gives them control of that space. So rolling against activation this time, they roll a one, so they will stop. They won't spend any more resources on rally. Okay, so looking for a special activity. Extort in one space with the most underground guerrillas. And we have a special instruction here. If there's an MPA base, only where two or more underground guerrillas. So extort says the location is any spaces without government control and with an underground guerrilla. Well, there are three such spaces, but we're told by the card here to select uh, one space with the most underground guerrillas. Okay, so these two are tied with the most, 
with three each. This one has a base, but that's okay because it has more than two. Well, it has two or more. So either one of these two could be selected. And since they're tied, we'll just select randomly. So this will be one, two, and three. This will be four, five, and six. The rolls of one. So central Mindanao will be the selection. And so looking at extort in each space, activate a guerrilla and add one NPA resources. Okay, so we activated a guerrilla and the NPA get one resource. That's the Robin Special Activity. That's the end of this turn or this card. For the next card, only the government is eligible. And the event is critical for them. They would really like to do this event. So it says, so this is a Grava Commission, Minority Report Clears General Ver. Shifts up to two cities towards support. Government remains eligible. Well, the problem is all the cities are at support, so this doesn't do anything. So here's a case where this is a, an ineffective event. Okay, so they're going to try for an op and special activity instead. Okay, so the government card says any spaces without government control. Yes, there are definitely spaces without government control. You need two or more population spaces with control troops, police, and no support protest or strike. I don't think so. Um, let me check. As I suspected, the answer is no. So, turn the card over. Um, and we're just going to do sweep. So, no, no more questions. <laughs> Question time's over. Let's just act. Okay, so they're going to do sweep using the move priorities first. So if we look at sweep, it says any space. Okay. So I've just put a white pawn in every space. So this is the reason why I wanted 10 white pawns, <laughs> so I could choose every space at the beginning. All right, well, they're going to use the move priorities here, which are, you know, slightly more complicated <laughs> than the uh, space selection priorities. All right, so how this works is um, we just go down the line for whichever faction we're considering. So we're looking at the government faction here. And we just sort of uh, go and we just do one thing at a time. Okay, so it says A here. So we look at uh, select a destination. The space specified by the NP faction space selection priorities table, 856, and not already selected as a destination. So in other words, we have to go over here and look at the space selection priorities. Okay. And there's a special one on here, which is sweep destination. Okay, so what we're going to do first is choose a destination space for sweep by using these priorities. Okay, where there's no government control. All right, well, that eliminates some spaces. All the spaces with government control are out. Okay. And then we just continue down the line looking for until we narrow it down to a single space. So next is vulnerable base of any faction. And there are no vulnerable bases on the map. Okay. So then most population. Well, you guessed it. <laughs> That's gonna be Eastern Mindanao. These spaces are all one. Okay, that's their destination space for sweep. Okay, so the government has selected a destination. The next thing, step B, is to select an origin. Interesting thing about sweep, as compared to other coin games, is um, the government can move queues from any spaces, as long as there's no protest or strike in that space. So they don't have to be adjacent or anything. They can just pick up pieces and move them. Okay. So we select an origin and it says the space with the most friendly cubes, activists or gorillas, and not already selected as a destination or as an origin of MPA march. Okay, this is an MPA march. Okay, the space with the most friendly cubes, activists or gorillas, and not already selected as a destination. So just the space that has the most um, government cubes which is going to be Cebu. That has five. That's more than Manila or any other space. Okay, so our origin is going to be there. 
All right, now that we've selected both a destination and an origin, we move down to this next part, which says select pieces to keep in origin. The idea behind this is to figure out what pieces need to be left behind in the origin to satisfy certain requirements. Right? You don't want to leave like a base vulnerable or something like that. Okay, so we just look at wherever dots are in the government column and we try to make sure that each one of these is satisfied. Okay, so we're just figuring out what pieces we're actually going to move here. Okay, so we're thinking about Cebu. Okay, so we're thinking about the origin space. All right, what pieces do we need to keep there is the idea. Okay, so first, keep sufficient pieces to change no government control in two plus population spaces. Well, it is a two population space, but uh, we could move all the cubes out of there and we'd still have, uh, there would still be government control because there's a base there. Okay, so that doesn't, uh, that doesn't uh, stop us from moving all the pieces. Uh, keep government firepower greater than or equal to vulnerable NPA pieces. Government firepower just means the number, uh, uh, the number of NPA pieces that could be removed if the government were to assault in that space. Right now there aren't any NPA pieces, so, uh, so that does nothing. Okay, keep police greater than vulnerable reformer pieces. There are no reformer pieces in the space. Keep two cubes in space with a government base. Okay, so that one is relevant because there's a base there. So we need to leave behind two cubes. Okay, so um, and the way these move is you move them police first, then troops, then back and forth. Okay, so these two would have to stay behind, at least so far. Okay, carrying on. So that's there, so there's two more here. Keep one cube in spaces with government base and activists. Okay, no activists in this space, so we don't have to do that. Keep government pieces greater than enemy pieces in Manila. This isn't Manila. Okay, so that's the end of that. Now we look to um, the next priority. So select pieces to get to destination. Okay, so we're not necessarily going to move all these pieces yet. We're just saying what we've done so far is figured out what pieces definitely have to stay behind. Now we figure out which of these pieces will actually move. All right, so the first priority for moving pieces is get government firepower equal to NPA pieces. Well, there are three NPA pieces in Eastern Mindanao, and so we want to get government firepower equal to three if possible, or as close to three as possible, I should say. All right, so um, assault, though, in a countryside space, only troops count for assault. So the best we can do here is move that one troop in there to make government firepower equal to one. We can't make it any better than that. Okay, so that troop will definitely move. Okay, then moving down, get police equal to active reformer pieces. Well, there aren't any active reformer pieces, so that doesn't do anything. Get control in the destination. Oh, okay. Well, they don't have control right now. They only have two versus three, so going to have to get at least four. That means move both of those pieces in to take control. Okay. Okay, and the rest of these priorities uh, don't do anything. Destination is not at support, and we've already got one police and one trip at the destination. So the last thing is now step C. Uh, if, there's if there's government control in the destination and MP government may select another sweep, we go back to step one. Okay, and they can select another sweep. There is control in the destination. So, Go back to step one, see if they will choose another sweep destination. Ah, but we have to be careful because we got to roll against the activation number before that can happen. The government rolled a two, which is less than the activation number, so they're not going to choose another sweep destination. So the government is not going to select any more spaces for sweep. There are no stars here. Uh, to do so, they'll just move on to the next uh, the next box, and they'll try to select a special activity. So first of all, if it's the eighty three campaign or later, it's not. This is only the eighty one campaign, so they won't do that. Uh, second is charm in one space without support using shift towards support. Problem is the government can't charm because 
uh, charm requires spending a patronage and they're at zero patronage so they can't actually do that okay and then the last one also says it only it's only relevant for the 83 campaign or later all right so that means they're not going to select a special activity they only selected one space uh, for their operation so they ended up doing a limited operation so they'll go there and that'll be the end of their turn there's no more eligible factions so that's the end of this card and that means every faction will be eligible for the next card so the next card is Aga Armas but I think I'm going to end this video here uh, we only managed to get through three cards, it looks like. <laughs> it's not much, but uh, I've been doing quite a bit of talking uh, through this video. It's gone on for some time. So I'm going to end this video here, and I hope you join me next time when we pick it up. I'll see you then.